G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Before we begin today's video, I would just like to thank everyone for sticking by the channel in the last couple of weeks. I've been quite busy and I haven't had many opportunities to make some content. So for those of you that have been watching videos and uh, sort of feeding the algorithm as much as you can, I greatly appreciate that. And for those of you, of course, that have supported the channel monetarily in that time, either through Air Models or through Patreon or through merch or anything like that, I sincerely appreciate it. It makes me really, really happy, and it's great to see everyone sort of still sticking by, even though I am sort of failing in my duty to serve the War Thunder community some decent content. So in that vein, we are going to be having a look at some new RP reductions that Gaijin have put forth for aviation and ground. These are quite imp impressive, uh, and obviously once every two years these types of things come around. I did mention that uh, that would be the case a couple of months ago based off some uh, things like that happening a couple of years ago where Gaijin does this sort of recalculation of overall uh, the research parameters for these types of vehicles. So we have ourselves a fairly high in some cases reduction in vehicle cost overall. The smallest one is Japan with a uh, an overall reduction in 408 hundred thousand so 408,000 RP that's about a whole plane worth of research that you don't need to do now and that's spread out over tiers mo mostly six and seven but uh, most of these tiers do get a rough l reduction some do get an increase but for me I think that this is not a major issue I think it'll eventually sort of make its way back through where you get things like uh, massive reductions in other tiers. So it is overall a, quite a positive thing. The highest one here is the US with 1.587 million RP being taken off the, the cost of you having to research everything. So for me that is quite impressive and this gives everyone a little bit more of a leg up in those sort of higher BRs, in those higher tiers. Um, of course there are some for ground vehicles but they are not quite as much. Uh, I would kind of like to see a little bit more, but honestly, anything is great with this type of thing. I don't really have much bad to say about these types of changes, except that I kind of wish they were a touch more. But you know what? That's not entirely a big deal, because I have an idea that could potentially give players another opportunity to make the grind a little bit easier. Towards the beginning of January, uh, a lot of people were saying that the grind is absolutely too hard and it's just getting worse and worse as time goes on and of course this is before we had any inkling of the changes that were coming in uh, August here so they were a lot of people saying that the grind was just getting worse and there was a couple of youtubers I think maybe just one but there were some content creators who uh, basically got up and said that it wasn't really the case and over time you had seen research costs for the same vehicles decreasing over and over again however the top BR planes and top BR tanks etc were still extremely expensive to research and that cost there was uh, basically staying roughly the same from what I remember but uh, this is kind of what I'm sort of getting at. If you can reduce those types of costs, which is what Gaijin's done, uh, you're going to make the player base a lot happier and I hope the player base is a lot happier with these changes but one of the things that this particular content creator failed to point out was that we have heaps more tech trees that we have to grind through now to get to our top BR. To access all the mechanics, all of the things that you need to at say top tier tanks, you're going to need a plane. Not only that, you're going to need a, a cast fighter, you're going to need some sort of ground attacker that carries either bombs or guided missiles, you're going to need a helicopter, potentially one that can carry either Hellfires or Vickers missiles or any other advanced tracking uh, optical missile that's not a tow, basically. Uh, things that stay out of the range of surface to air missiles and of course you're going to need them you're going to need your IFVs for spotting and your light tanks and uh, there's the list goes on. So for these types of tiers where you need a lot of research it is extremely hard to crack into these types of mechanics because you need to basically buy a high tier premium for all of these in order to even access this type of area. So what I would propose is actually quite simple. In order to allow players to go into all of these tech trees and not spend 45, yes that's right, 45 different individual tech trees if you include boats, that is coastal fleet, 
Blue Water Fleet, Helicopters, Aviation and Tanks. For all of those, and if you were to buy a top tier premium for all, you would basically be looking at a whopping 45 tech trees worth or 45 individual premium planes, tanks, helicopters and boats. That is a lot of money to be spending. 45 anything is a lot. 45 bloody apples is a lot. So if you want to buy 45 $60 premiums, then you're not going to have a lot of money at the end. And in fact, that's costing, that'll, that'll cost like well over what I'd be paying for a really nice computer, which is, you know, kind of my, my hobby. So if you really just want to live and breathe War Thunder, then by all means, buy 45 $60 premiums premiums but I don't really see many people doing that feasibly and I don't see many people in low-income countries doing that either so one of the things that I would suggest in order to keep these types of people feeding the server is to basically give them premiums as rewards for playing the game and how would you do this feasibly without it being something that you could game the system it wouldn't be a daily logins thing that's for sure because you could literally just log in grab your stuff and then go I would suggest something like the Warbond system, and in fact you could even use the Warbond system in its current form. It doesn't really require that much more tweaking, it only requires the addition of not a tier 6 or a tier 5 premium, but even just a tier 4 premium in that spot in the Warbond shop. Instead of having dinky tier 1 and tier 2s, you well I mean you could have them, but in addition you could have a tier 3, tier 4, maybe even a tier 5 premium in the Warbond shop to aid these newer players to expand into different tech trees. Maybe it would be worth 20 special tasks and 3,600 Warbonds. Or maybe you could increase the amount of Warbonds that you could carry through and it would have to be like 4,000 or 5,000 Warbonds. Maybe it would be two months worth of grinding or two battle seasons, battle pass seasons worth of grinding and an insane amount of hard work and dedication, but you could do it. Having that opportunity to actually do it would make so much more of a difference. And these would be premiums like the T29, the Befehlswagen Jagdpanzer, uh, Plagueis' Spitfire, you know, Bostwick's P47, the A6 M5 Co, I think it is, or the Kai 87, any type of tier 4 plane, maybe even a tier 5, like an Attacker FB2, things like that, just to get people into these tech trees allow them to access these types of mechanics or at least make it a little bit more accessible. But not only that, you would also be expanding people's horizons to more tech trees. You would be, instead of having them just rigidly play Germany or rigidly play America or Russia or whatever, you name it, these players would now be able to explore different tech trees and different tech with different play styles and that would make the game a lot more positive. You would have a wider variety of people playing a wider variety of vehicles. You could just not make this a thing for the elite, if you will. It would be a thing that every individual player, with a little bit of time and dedication, would actually be able to do whilst grinding out their other planes and other tanks. This would be the ideal solution for me, where you would have even just a basic thing, like a basic premium helicopter, or a basic premium ship, or a basic premium uh, rank 4 vehicle. These would be really, really good for the game, because you would just have so many people that would now be able to try out different tech trees, and would now be able to flesh out their stuff without forking in a fair bit of cash. And you might say, well, this would take sales from the store. This would take, you know, a $30, $40 premium. But these types of players would not be able to grind efficiently at tier 6 and at tier 7 with these rank 4s. So you wouldn't have that issue. In fact, it might actually encourage people to spend money because they are wanting to get that tier 5 or 6 thing more and more. Or it might, instead of forcing them to buy that $60 premium that they were never going to bother with anyway, instead choose two or three thousand golden eagles to then go and buy a talisman for a rank five or six vehicle which they could then use to grind out things this is a much better solution and this encourages people to play and in of course it encourages people to pay because at the end of the day the paying customers are the things that keep gaijin afloat and the paying customers are the things that gaijin has to look after but of course if you forget about everyone else at the bottom they're just going to leave, and you need numbers to populate your servers. And to have people grinding 
spending lots of time playing the game in order to get that premium that is going to populate your servers especially at those mid tiers and of course it is going to improve the player base in general because they now get to experience things that they never would have experienced because they would have just been too hard to grind things like maybe the Lorraine 40T would have been out of reach for certain players who just otherwise wouldn't have had the time or money but now because they've spent a little bit of time that they had to grind out their French pre rank 4 premium now they get that opportunity and I think that is an absolutely vibrantly positive thing if that would ever happen I would really really praise Gaijin that would be probably my favorite thing to come to the game this would really give players a second chance at War Thunder especially those who are a bit hesitant because of the grind remember you are losing players because people don't want to grind but you know what if they are rewarded if they are thrown a bone every now and then it might just encourage them to stay that little bit longer and to continue playing because they aren't as discouraged by that grind as they otherwise would have been so ladies and gentlemen the second thing that has been of uh, fairly interesting stuff in recent times is the addition of some interesting repair costs. Now, Gaijin have in the past been quite rubbish with their repair costs, and whilst they're not in the game for no reason at all, of course they do stop botting and they do give people the uh, sort of kick in the bum to potentially reflect on the way they're playing and encourage some better play styles. And of course it uh, gives you a little bit of a penalty for suiciding, but most of the negatives here are quite large at this particular point in War Thunder's history. So what I would suggest, or what I, what I think is going on here, is Gaijin is taking these good planes, noticing that they're statistically above, uh, cut above the rest, and in order to minimize or to equalize the amount of RP that these players are getting, they are increasing the repair cost in order to reduce the aggregate of silver lions that are, are basically earned over the period of this vehicle existing. For me, this seems really stupid. This seems like a method of uh, sort of reducing everyone's RP regardless of the way that they play and forcing only the best players in the market to be able to cope with this certain change. It sort of ends up with the wealthiest players or the best players playing this vehicle and it just further drives up the statistics, further driving up the rewards, and therefore cutting out those lower players out of the uh, out, out of the silver line market, if you will. For me, this is quite tragic because this basically brings a lot of uh, frustration to those that are trying to learn a new tank or plane. Alternatively, it prevents those people from uh, playing and learning it effectively. For me, having that sort of issue, having that sort of thing in the game is just detrimental to new players. And of course, it just keeps those older players satisfied as if nothing ever happened because they get seven kills or they get 10 kills every time they spawn in it. And that's the end of it. The new players, whilst they're still learning it, they don't really get that opportunity to do something good with the tank or do something good with the plane. And then they end up dying, paying 30,000 to repair it. And what do you know? It's now been priced out of the market into obscurity. I will say though that these higher repair costs are not a bad thing for top tier. If you think about top tier, top tiers are always getting down tier. These 11.0s or uh, these types of things, or even super props versus those lower tier jets. These types of planes tend to have a higher repair cost simply because they are quite good. And when they get down tiered against props, they are extremely deadly and when those top tier jets get down tiered all the time against those uh, lower jets like 10.3s, 10.0s, they tend to club them and so having a higher re re risk to reward ratio means that you are going to have issues when you get clubbed by say a 10.0. I do think there are better ways to do this though. I think if you get up tiered, your reward should be a lot higher. I think that uh, skill does rank does not matter or skill matters or god mode awards should be insanely higher and i think if you're killing a 10.7 in a 9.7 you should be getting much much higher sl and rp and even a 10.3 killing a 10.7 should have higher rewards than a 10.3 killing a 10.0 for me i don't think repair cost is the way to balance things i think having a, an a exorbitantly high repair cost is just going to push players that are not quite as good out of the market 
and it is just going to keep that negative feedback loop to the point where it is just going to be detrimental to certain planes, pushing them out of obscurity. The way Gaijin seems to be going about this is particularly Soviet. It seems to be a reflection of the way that Gaijin acts and the way that Gaijin thinks. They don't think as this individual is doing well, therefore I should reward him. It's more this individual is not part of the aggregate, or rather the aggregate is too high and therefore we have to lower the whole thing. And that will just make the smaller ones on the bottom further compressed and give the guys at the top no real issues at all because at the end of the day the people at the top of that uh, little echelon there in the Sagittaria making a 10 to 1 kill death ratio aren't really going to be affected by the repair cost as much as someone who is barely 1 to 1 and whilst it might be a case of get good it doesn't help new players learn the game it forces them to play premiums it forces them to play less viable planes and of course Whilst it does reduce their overall numbers in the matchmaking, I think balancing in some cases by battle rating is a lot more of a better solution. Throwing the Sagittario from 8.0 to 8.7 is a much more viable solution because now it is essentially in obscurity because it is facing planes that are pretty much identical in performance to it. Whereas you have uh, a massive repair cost, you're just going to prevent those mediocre players or those average players from playing the plane but you're still going to have that player who knows what they're doing clubbing the shit out of everyone and for me that is really not a good thing just because you reduce the numbers overall it doesn't mean that you've solved the problem it kind of means that you've tucked it in under the rug and forgotten about it which is, to me is not a real solution what i would really like to see is some other mechanism or some more personalized instead of just looking at algorithms all day or looking at excel spreadsheets all day i would love to see a form of curated balancing and this is what ties me into my final thing battle ratings i have harped on about battle ratings for the existence of this channel and i've always stressed that balancing by statistics alone doesn't cut it especially at those higher tiers but more importantly balancing from top down does not work in war thunder if you're going to take the top tier and say that that is what I balance by, then you've gone about it the entirely wrong way, simply because those higher tiers might be fine, but what you will end up doing is compressing the lower tiers. And this, for me, is uh, what I'm probably the most passionate about, because at the end of the day, if you don't have a balanced game, it's not worth grinding, it's not worth playing. If you had some wizard game that was just incredibly well balanced incredibly curated and incredibly fun but it was grindy i would be more willing to play that than a game that is easy to get into but garbage so this for me is the most important part of war thunder having a good balanced game that is balanced from the bottom up balancing from bottom up ensures that as you go through each battle rating you're not going to get clubbed by some wonder plane or you're not going to get clubbed by someone who knows what they're doing in a plane that is under tiered because at the higher brs it doesn't get the good stuff that the others get for example the mig 19 is a great example of this or the ee lightning that is probably one of my favorite clubbing machines simply because you have red tops and you get to face things like G91s that top out at 1,000 kilometers an hour. And when you get those guys turning, one or two turns, they drop to like 600 kilometers per hour with their missiles. And of course, a red top is an easy, easy kill when a target is 600 kilometers an hour. There is no way you can escape a red top, even at those types of speeds. So the thing is, with planes that are under tiered because they perform poorly at higher BRs, you end up with a situation where these people who, maybe they're small, maybe it's a select few, are really, really good at a plane. Like, I'm decent at the Lightning. I have a 2 to 1 kill death ratio, which is fairly good for me. And, of course, I get down tiered a little bit more often than I think is appropriate. Facing things like that really throws out the balance of the game. And if I want to play properly in the G91, I have to make sure that I catch an English Electric Lightning doing something stupid and that is the only way that I can catch him and that is a result of that top-down battle rating balance. For me, all Gaijin really needs to do, they can, they can even keep their statistics, but if they realize that a plane is performing poorly, 
it's not the plane itself that should be moved, it is the planes around it that potentially should increase in battle rating instead. Because if this plane is getting up tiered all the time, like a 10.0 in an 11.0 matchmaker, then of course it's going to have shit statistics. But that's no cause for it to go down to 9.7 where it's going to club 8.7s. And for me, this is the problem with Gaijin. They're just not looking at things in what I would consider the correct way. They're kind of looking at things upside down. And when you look at numbers and spreadsheets, you don't actually see what's happening on the ground daily or weekly or whenever you play this game. They don't actually see what's going on when they're not the ones playing every single BR every day. That's the community. And the community, in a way, has a very important voice, which is not being heard. And it is, of course, the job of the community partners and the, and the YouTubers and, you know, Twitch streamers and, and dare I say TikTokers, but um, those of us that really have a, a voice, this is kind of what I like to harp on about. So for those of you that have watched my content before and that uh, understand my frustration with battle ratings, then you can we can all share and we can all bathe in that sort of frustration. But for those of you who maybe are watching me for the first time, I appreciate you watching, of course. Uh, this is one of the things that really makes me the most passionate about War Thunder and, uh, you know, making my voice heard, if you will. If you balance, like I said, from the bottom up, you ensure that every way through, every step through those battle ratings, you have a balanced game. The only time where this is going to be an issue is if you don't want to increase that maximum battle rating ceiling. But for me, I would rather have a compressed 10.0 to 11.0 than a compressed 9.7 to 8.7, 8.3 to 7.3 because you sacrifice one battle rate for the benefit of the two and to me that's a much better solution even if you are still throwing away a few planes maybe you're throwing away a dozen planes but for those players that are grinding up now especially with those RP reductions you're going to have to grind through a couple of battle ratings there where you're just going to have planes that are either but fuck useless or brutally overpowered but you have to learn them really really intensely and for me i'd love to find a middle ground finding that middle ground is where i stand and ladies and gentlemen if you agree with me do let me know but of course this is uh kind of what i'm most passionate about if you want to let me know what you think in the comments below definitely do so but until then take care no face cam today but I'll catch you next time.